Recording. Welcome to our virtual AP night. Um, my name is Keith Haber. I am one of the assistant principals and the assistant advanced placement coordinator and the advanced placement testing coordinator. Uh, and my name is Amy Hammock, uh, and I am also one of the assistant principals and uh, registrar. Uh, and I work with Mr. Haber on advanced placement um, for program coordinating. So tonight we're going to talk to you a little about the advanced placement program, what it is, I'll talk a little about the uh, success of our advanced placement program, and also um, the enrollment process. So first, what are AP classes? Uh, AP classes are essentially college level coursework that's being offered at the high school level. What uh, distinguishes an advanced placement course from other courses is that it's aligned to a national curriculum, which is established by college board and in conjunction with a variety of colleges throughout the nation. Um, the curriculum is um, composed of high school and college faculty who get together and more importantly, they have a test at the end to assure that students who have completed the curriculum have done so in a way that shows that they've mastered the content and skills. Uh, that test takes place in May of every school year. There are a variety of benefits for AP coursework. Uh, first and foremost, for a lot of students, it's because they can get college credit. So they do enjoy being able to uh, avoid certain classes in college. Uh, but more often than not, the biggest benefit is really that they have access to rigorous coursework at the high school level where they have to think more critically, think more deeply, and start to think in a more of a college-oriented way, and yet at the same time have the support and structure of having the high school environment, which means that their teachers are here to give them support. They'll see their teachers much more often. They'll see the college professor, and they have that structure and support to help them out um, in this coursework and get prepared for the college environment. And then, of course, taking advanced placement classes like colleges know that a student is ready for college and, of course, can help with the admissions process because they can see a student who is successful taking rigorous coursework at the high school level. So what are the expect expectations for AP classes? Well, first and foremost, many of them do have some summer requirements. Most often than not, this is just to provide students with a good foundation and basis so they can be successful when the school year starts, although it's not a given that every course requires any kind of summer assignments or reading. But if it does, we expect that students do take that summer work and complete it. Um, we expect that the students will take the first semester final exam that is designed to align with the AP exam and prepare them for that type of rigorous uh, exam at the end of the school year. The courses are full year courses, so we do not uh, have schedule changes in the middle of the year. A student who's enrolled in an AP class does commit to a full year enrollment in that class, and they sign an agreement to that, um, to that effect. And then, of course, at the end of the school year, because we also want our students to earn college credit, uh, they will pay for and complete the AP exam. And we usually start that registration process at the uh, end of first semester and then allow for people to pay for their AP exams as they go through sort of the middle of second semester in preparation for the exams in May. So the AP exam itself is a standardized exam. It's written and created by the College Board. Uh, it's given at the end of May, uh, sorry, not the end of the beginning of May, but at the end of the course. It uh, serves as the final exam for the spring semester. It also serves as a way for College Board to assure that students have actually mastered the content, content and skills. And then colleges will use that as their sort of national standard. Um, students are required to take the exam if they enroll in an AP course. The current fee is $95. Uh, that pays for the administration of the exam, but also for all the scoring. Uh, and AP exams are scored in multiple ways. There is a multiple choice section, but then also a free response uh, section where students will uh, either write a variety of short answer responses, uh, document-based questions, uh, longer essay questions. And what happens is that this pays for all of the uh, all the people who have to come together to score all of those uh, responses, uh, which we call the AP reading, which happens during the summertime. Uh, the only courses that are different is the AP capstone courses, which is AP seminar and AP research, because they're much more intensive when it comes to the scoring, or uh, $143 per exam. Those are the current prices, and those can change year to year based on changes in courses. The uh, AP test is graded on a one through five scale. And the way that the process works is that College Board is assessing, uh, and this is in conjunction with colleges, what they feel is an adequate score for a student to be able to receive college credit, uh, credit which means that they are qualified to receive that credit. So three, four, or five uh, are the three scores that we're looking at, three for qualified, or up to extremely qualified for five. 
And this is how we've done on our AP courses over the last several years. You can see from 2018 to 2020, um, Macintosh is well above the uh, Georgia and the national rate for students who earn credit on the AP exam. Um, you will see then 2020, there was a uh, decrease in the number of exams that students took, as well as the number of uh, exams where students earned credit. Um, that was kind of for the fact that with the pandemic, we had fewer students who completed the exam. Uh, and of course, it was an atypical administration for the exam. Uh, this year, we do also believe it may be an atypical administration, but not necessarily at the same level. College Board has indicated that they do want to provide a multiple choice component, as well as the free response component. Um, but even in 2020, um, we see that we still perform well above uh, the uh, schools, both in the state of Georgia and nationally. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ms. Amy Hammack to talk about how to enroll in AP courses. Yes, thank you, Mr. Haber. Clearly our uh, resident expert on all things AP uh, testing. Um, what I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to discuss with you is about how you would uh, enroll in AP courses at McIntosh High School. Um, our process this year uh, is going to look uh, differently than in uh, years past. Uh, several reasons why we um, are not able to um, pull AP potential from first semester and that generate, is generated from uh, the PSAT that's given to our ninth graders and our 10th graders and some of our 11th graders. Uh, and so that would have given us some, um, some qualifiers for our students uh, in certain AP courses. Well, because we didn't administer that test in the fall, we just administered it yesterday, uh, we're unable to uh, pull that AP potential. So we had to kind of um, adapt uh, this process a little bit to the, the current state that we find ourselves uh, and why we're doing a virtual uh, AP night. So what I want to point out here is um, are the steps for um, re requesting courses, other uh, AP courses uh, at Macintosh. So the first step is we need to do some research. So I'm going to show you a couple of things where you can go out even before we do any registration, advise with our counselors, just to kind of uh, look at some uh, background information to make sure that uh, the AP courses that you might be interested in are a good fit for you. Um, uh, we're going to pull up some of the um, AP policies and agreements because as Mr. Um, Haber mentioned, there are some expectations for students who take AP courses. And so I want to review some of those with you. And then finally, we'll finish up with the actual nuts and bolts of um, getting in those AP courses at Macintosh. So one of the first things that I'll will ask you to do, your counselors um, and your administration would ask you to do is to research AP courses that you um, are interested in. So one of the sites that I find very helpful, I'm going to slide this over here, is um, exploreap.org. And so it's um, maintained obviously by the College Board. And what I like about this site is um, you can click on how to get started. It shows you different um, videos and different um, handouts related to the different um, um, AP coursework. Um, I particularly like, if everyone can see that, is this search credit policies here um, on this particular site because then if I am interested in taking an AP course, as Mr. Haber mentioned, scoring a three, four, or five on an AP exam could potentially earn me credit in college. And I would wanna know if that would be beneficial to me. So you would click on an AP course. Let's say I might be interested in AP biology. And so it would list by school um, what you would, um, if you put, pull up a school who offers uh, AP biology credit, um, and if you would um, have the um, credit, the grade, the, the, fill, the score in order to receive that credit. So let's say that I might be interested in Agnes Scott um, here in Atlanta. So Agnes Scott College here locally in Georgia, if I made a four minimum on my AP biology exam that I could get credit for um, most likely a biology course. And so I could click and then it would tell me um, you know, other things that Agnes Scott would have, you know, for their different courses. If I scroll down to look for AP Biology, um, I may have missed it. Nope, coming up on the sciences, back up. I missed Biology, there it is, Al alphabetical, go figure. Uh, then um, it would be, oh, it doesn't give me the equivalent course there, but if I did Calculus AB, it would tell me that Math 118 would be the course that I could get um, the um, equivalent for. Um, scoring a um, four on that. 
And just so people know, typically AP courses are the introductory level courses. So it's designed to uh, either be a first and or second semester of a course sequence. Um, so that, you know, people need to be aware of that because even if you don't have an interest in that topic and that subject area, you're probably going to take a core course. And so a lot of times students will take an AP course at high school level, get credit, so they don't have to take something like AP biology if, for instance, they're not interested in biology. You know they have to take a little science uh, in order to graduate from college. Awesome. So take a look at that site as you're doing your research. Um, also, our Macintosh site um, would have information for you, and uh, we just updated some things for you today. Uh, we'll put this video here under our virtual AP night information, um, but I have links to handouts, and Mr. Haber has helped me with that. Um, and then also um, a timeline. So just some information at the bottom of this are links to the college board descriptions of our courses that we offer at Macintosh. So that would be on our website under student resources, advanced placement. So just another um, thing to take a look at when you are doing your research as step one. Um, our counselors are updating their Schoology uh, page. So that would be a good place as well. And our counselors will talk more about that when they do um, classroom and individual advisement. Uh, be sure you talk to parents and your teachers, uh, obviously your counselors, about if AP coursework is a good fit for you. Um, our counselors are going to be available uh, the week of uh, February 1st to do lunch and learns in the cafeteria. They'll be set up in the um, the front office lobby um, and they will be asked, they'll answer your questions about AP, um, about courses of rigor, about registration, about academic planner. So use that as an opportunity to stop by and talk to them during your lunch period. Um, the other thing that I would have you take a look at is our, um, our AP guidance um, document for um, prerequisites. And so this is also available on the website and it just kind of would tell you um, what AP courses um, would, be, would be a good fit for you based on prerequisites that you've taken and grades that you may have received uh, in first semester or a previous class. So for example, in um, AP language, which is a replacement course for American Lit in 11th grade, uh, AP Lang and Composition, uh, the prerequisite that the AP teachers in our district decided, all the AP language teachers decided would be um, a good prerequisite would be a minimum grade of an 80% in first semester in either gifted 10th lit or regular 10th lit. And so you could take a look at what courses um, and what grade cutoffs uh, would be a, um, a good um, prerequisite indicator for our AP courses. Now some of these have um, recommendations by our teachers and our teachers are in the process right now of making recommendations. In our math department, um, our Excel pre-calc teachers make recommendations for calculus A, B, or BC, and in our world languages department, um, the AP Spanish levels three and four native speakers, and then our French three and four make recommendations uh, for AP language. So that document is available on our website, but that would be just a, a good snapshot of what our prerequisites are. Uh, I will also, because we aren't able to do AP Potential, uh, be generating some information from your grades in Infinite Campus. Um, and I expect, and your coursework from your transcript, um, to send out information um, by the middle of next week uh, that will tell you, based on your transcript, courses and grades, what, um, you know, what courses might be a, a good fit for you um, using these prerequisites that I just showed you. So I will be sending out something for you since we don't have AP potential this year. All right, the other thing that is gonna be very helpful is our AP registration info and course catalog also on our, on our website. Um, the catalog is a 27 page document. Don't let that, you know, be overwhelming to you, uh, but it's broken down by different content areas um, telling you about our AP course offerings descriptions. Prerequisites are listed there as well. Um, our teachers have um, listed some skills that they think that AP students should have to be successful uh, in the AP coursework. Um, our AP policies and agreements are listed there again. And I also have asked, since we are doing a virtual um, and we aren't able to do our um, a, um, a, a traditional AP night, I've asked our teachers to uh, make videos and just describing what the course is like, what the expectations are, so that you can put a course with a face, so to speak. So this is our 26-page um, document 
for trace one page document for the uh, course catalog um, and it just does an introduction we're kind of going through that now it links to some other things that i've already mentioned to you um, what i do want to show is i'm going to scroll past that for just a minute, the, uh, steps registration is our um our courses. So here, under um, career technical education, we have two AP courses that Mr. Cramlett teaches, and those are uh, computer science principles and uh, computer science. Well, he has recorded a video. So if you click on this green highlighted link with the play button, you can click and see Mr. Cramlett give some information about his AP computer science principles course. So just a little bit of an additional uh, resource for you um, as you are completing your um, AP research um, step, the first step in deciding if an AP course is something that you might want to request to be in your schedule. Step two, um, also in this uh, course catalog are listed your um, AP policies and agreements. Um, and I just wanted to point out a few of those that are important to um, um, keep in mind as you sign up and agree to take AP courses. Mr. Haber mentioned that there might be some summer assignments and some reading. Um, that is mentioned in the course catalog that I just showed you. Uh, so if a, um, a course might have some summer coursework, that is listed by the teacher in that particular course. So read those. Um, as he mentioned, we are these are year-long courses, so we don't allow schedule changes in between courses. So you want to make sure that it's a good fit right from the start. Um, you will be taking the first semester exam. Mr. Haber mentioned that that is just one of the expectations for AP. We want to um, give you an opportunity to take kind of a mock exam. And that um, exam time first semester in December is a good practice to have an extended period where an AP teacher uh, can give you a longer exam that would look like uh, what an AP exam might look like um, based on the content that you've learned first semester. You are required to pay for your AP exams. Uh, Mr. Haber mentioned that. Um, you, I wanted to also mention about your transcript and how AP affects your grades. So the grade that you earn in an AP class will be averaged into your cumulative GPA and that a separate GPA will be calculated with a quality point added, which means by taking an AP course, you do get a quality point added to your final grade. We don't add additional points to your semester final, but behind the scenes in the transcript, you get a quality point added so that you do get a bump for taking more rigorous cor uh, coursework. Uh, in comparison to dual enrollment, a dual enrollment uh, quality point uh, that's added is a 0.5, but an AP course gets a full one quality point added. Um, once you accept an AP class, it is a commitment that you're making. Um, we will be continuing to look this semester at prerequisites, so you want to make sure that you are still continuing to be sex successful this semester um, and that um, it, what might not jeopardize, it won't jeopardize um, your ability to be in an AP course next semester or next school year. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that we at the district level and at the school level believe that students, that very few students um, should take more than two or three AP courses in a, in a year. Um, our recommendation is that ninth graders take maximum of one course unless they're in STEM. STEM students generally could take two because they are required to take AP environmental science as part of their STEM program. In 10th grade, two courses is the recommended AP course load. And in 11th and 12th grade, three courses is the recommended uh, course load. Um, we will be doing a, um, when you meet with your counselors for individual advisement, they will talk you through the um, AP maximum course exemption process because some students do want to take more than the recommended number and that involves um, a conversation between the student the counselor we bring in um, the administration to kind of give approval uh, and also clearly a parent and guardian um, or guardian sign off that that is the right um, number of ap courses for a student to take um, so if an 11th grader, for example, wishes to take AP US history, AP language, uh, AP statistics, and wants to pick up AP computer science, that would exceed the three um, maximum courses that we would recommend. So the student would speak to their counselor during AP advisement, individual advisement, to make sure um, that they complete the AP maximum course exemption form and process. Uh, and your counselors will talk, to you, will talk to you more about that during um, advisement time. So the last step is to do registration. 
So to register for AP courses and to make that request into your schedule, um, counselors will be doing a general classroom advisement the week of February the 8th. Um, they will be in your um, health and PE classrooms uh, to discuss AP, but also other electives and core classes. Um, for the uh, ninth graders, health and PE classes on February 9th. For 10th graders in world history and AP world history on February 10th. Uh, American Lit and AP Lang students will get their advisement um, on February the 11th, and our virtual students will have some Zoom sessions planned with their counselors on February the 12th. We're gonna be using the academic planner this year, so we'll talk more about that during that uh, classroom advisement time. Um, some APs may already be placed in your schedule because it's a part of your math track, for example, or your um, teacher may have already made a recommendation. But if there's an AP course that's not listed in your academic planner, planner that you want uh, to be considered and you meet the prerequisite, to be considered for your schedule, then um, you will set up an individual appointment with your counselor. And so that's the second part of registration is to make an individual um, advisement appointment with your counselor. And then you can discuss at, in more detail, um, uh, except, you know, aside from being in the classroom, in more detail with your counselor about your academic performance, prerequisite courses, um, future goal, academic goals that you have, uh, your um, counselor will help you register for those AP courses that are not already listed in your planner. Um, and then also to help you with the um, AP maximum course exemption process, if that's the direction you're considering. All right, so the last thing as we wind down, and I appreciate Mr. Haver you being here and, and um, helping me with that, um, with our video today. Um, what happens next is that, beside from expecting your counselors coming in to see you, um, during um, your classroom advisement and setting up appointments with them uh, in February and in March. Um, in April, um, once you go through all of your types of registration and, and advisement, um, I will pull a student plan for every student um, who's at school and virtual, and um, I will be sending that home that will list all of your core and elective courses, uh, including your APs for next school year. So this is kind of your, um, it's like your report card of um, how your advisement and your registration went through this uh, registration season. In April, I will also include with that student plan for any students who have AP courses in their student plan, the AP acceptance and agreement form. And that's when you're gonna see those um, policies and agreement statements coming back up again that you'll need to sign off on. Um, and that will be an electronic form. So that will happen in April. And then that's when I begin my magic is what I'm told. It's just a lot of magic in building a master schedule. It's a lot more than magic. I wish it was so easy. Uh, I will look at all of your requests, your recommendations, the things that you would like to have placed in your schedule for every student, um, virtual and at school. And we will be looking at the teachers that we have, our assignments, and I will be Again, building the master schedule, which will then um, produce your student schedule. And a lot goes into that, which is why we're gathering all this information during our registration time. Um, I have to say that it's not a guarantee that the courses you request um, or to have in your planner, including AP courses, may make it into your schedule. A lot goes into determining um, if those courses can be offered, and that includes our staffing and our teachers and you know who's qualified to, to teach those courses. Um, and so what we can do is just make sure those get into your plan uh, during this registration time. And then uh, once I build your schedule, uh, you will see that uh, sometime in May and students are not able to change electives or advanced placement courses after June 1st, because then I need to finalize the schedule and you know, head into summer break and enjoy my summer break <laughs> and the counselors need to enjoy their <laughs> summer break so after june 1st um, any ap courses any electives um, that are in your schedule um, will stay in your schedule unless there's a reason they shouldn't be there and that would be for example if you'd already taken something and it happened to be in your schedule and you already have credit for it we don't want you sitting through a class twice that you already have credit for clearly that's an error and we want to fix that um, or something that you don't have a prerequisite for. So if we get to building that schedule out and realize that you don't have the prerequisite for a certain course, then we will catch that and make sure we correct that because we don't wanna put you in something that you may not be successful in. So that's the process. Um, I know that that's a lot to take in. I would recommend that you maybe, you know, watch this video again in different parts. Definitely take a look at the information we have on the, our website and your counselors will show you in their Schoology page. Spend some time with these documents, uh, especially that course, um, those that um, course book, 
Um, and definitely take a look at, I'm gonna scroll one more time, make sure you're looking at these videos that your teachers have prepared for you. Um, the last thing is um, we will be uh, on um, Friday the 1st, or excuse me, Monday the 1st, mm -hmm. February the 1st, Monday. Um, we were, will be hosting, at some. your teachers will be hosting some Zoom sessions. Um, and so let me bring this timeline up real quick so that you can kind of see what we have planned for you. So that's kind of our virtual AP night. Um, that video, the one I'm recording right now, watch it again. Um, look at that course document um, that I showed you that has all those video links. Click on those video links. And then you can Zoom with your teachers um, for Q&A sessions from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, on this timeline document, which is on our website, I just want to scroll down here, and there are all your Zoom links. So I've already um, asked those teachers to generate those um, links ahead of time. Don't go ahead and jump on a Zoom now. They're not ready yet. It's, it's just Wednesday in my world right now. So uh, not until February the 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, will they be ready to Zoom with you. But have those questions ready. Anything that's not answered by their video or something that I've addressed or Mr. Haber's addressed, or um, if you've um, been able to take a look through the course catalog, if you've got specific questions, jump on that Zoom link and ask those directly. And that's a two-way communication in real time. Um, if you're not able to, I've also included their email. Your AP teachers wanna be able to answer your questions. That's what they live for. So that's why they're AP teachers, to answer student questions. So email those to them uh, and they will um, uh, um, respond to you in, a, in, a, in short order. So on this timeline document, all of those Zoom links are um, right there on that second page. Um, everything I discussed is the rest of the timeline. The appointment times to set up with your counselors are also listed here. Uh, so one last thing I just wanna point out is where this is, and that is on your, um, in our, on our website. So under student resources, everything I just mentioned is a link here. And once we record this video, we're gonna place that also uh, right there at the top for uh, the kickoff to our AP virtual night. So I um, appreciate you taking the time to, um, to watch our video and take a look at these documents. Please feel free to um, ask us questions, Mr. Haber and I, if we are in the hallway, send us emails. We want to um, also help you out and make sure that you are set up for success with your AP courses. Mr. Haber, any final words? No, thank you, Ms. Hammond, for putting all this together, and I hope everyone has found this to be informative. All right. Well, uh, we uh, look forward to virtually seeing you um, on, at our Zoom sessions on Monday night, February 1st, from 7 to 8, um, and we will see you then. Thanks so much. Bye.